What's good with y'all, man? It's your boy. We're back with another video. Now, today, 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 we got the first of this new series. Um, this is the sad truth about LeBron James. Let's get into it, y'all. All right, so um, what inspired me to drop these videos is just basically because I've been seeing a lot of people play a rankings that's putting LeBron in, like, out of the top five of NBA players and saying he's washed. And it's like, it's almost like, a repeat of what happened before he won a championship last year um, where people just basically count LeBron out because uh, he had a bad, not even a bad season because they just didn't go to the finals. Um, that pretty much is what I've been seeing online and everywhere. So basically what we're going to be doing today is going in here by the numbers, looking at everything and seeing is LeBron James declining? Is he falling off? And is he still a top five NBA player? But make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Turn the notifications on so you can get the first video as soon as it drop and be the first people underneath the video. I'm about to start doing a giveaway once 2K22 come around. And I do appreciate anybody that's watching my videos. This is kind of like a dry moment before, you know, football season start, basketball season start, and before 2K come out. Once those come out, it'll be way, way, way more content and better flowing videos. Right now, I'm just coming up with videos to think of for real, for real. So um, that's what led me to make this video, The Sad Truth About LeBron James. Now, with this video, at any video, if it's the sad truth, it could be a sad good truth. It could be a sad bad truth. We won't know until we go into depth and figure out what's the truth about what's the media narrative and what's the truth behind it. So let's get into it. All right, so just going in here and looking at the stats and the numbers, LeBron really hasn't fell off uh, for the most part as far as everything I'm saying. His <coughs> excuse me, his points per game dropped about two points per game. Um, but that's pretty much with him coasting through the season. Now, last season, he was averaging 25 and 10, leading the league in assists, just proving that he's the greatest passer of all time. Um, I feel like he's obviously the greatest passer. If he was put in the passing role of John Stockton or somebody, he would have the most assists of all time. That's just my, I mean, I think that's common sense. I don't, that's not any bias or anything in that claim. Um, but just going in here, you know, a lot of people say he has filling off. And if just diving deep into everything, he really hasn't. I mean, if you could say last year, Last season, he was the best player, or Anthony Davis. Him and Anthony Davis was top two or top three. LeBron averaged 25, 8, and 10. This season around, we're only playing. I'm pretty sure he only played, make sure. Pretty sure he only played about, what, like 40 or 50 games. He averaged 25, 8, and 8 which is pretty much just a two-point difference on points per game average. But he was dealing with that ankle injury all season. And just like with the groin, uh, people said he was kind of washed out with the groin. Um, his stats were kind of deferred just because he was dealing with injury and the team was struggling. Just like if anybody really got injured or any of your favorite superstar or player got hurt, their stats will fall off. It's pretty common. But... Just going in here um, to get back to the point, has he fallen off? Um, my point, I would say no. The reason I would say no that he hasn't fallen off and he's still a top player in this league, obviously. Um, go back to about, I'm pretty sure that was March. March. Yeah, March, April. -ish. He was the front runner for MVP. The only reason Nikola Jokic won the MVP is because LeBron got hurt. Uh if you if I go back here by March, looking just at a couple articles, he was the reigning and the leader for the MVP. If he would have just finished the season out and Lakers would have finished in the second, third, or fourth, or not even fourth, but the second or third seed, he would have won MVP. So my hypothesis is from when he got hurt to when he came back for those last 10 games and played that playoff games in those playoff series with the Suns. So about those 17 game stretch. Did that 17 game stretch lead to LeBron not being a top five player anymore? I feel like that's the question to ask here. I feel like everybody's kind of like overthinking it or kind of doing it. And those 17 games was LeBron taken off the top 
five from going number one to dropping all the way off the top five of NBA players. Um, in that seven game spread, they did beat the Warriors to get into the play in game. Um, if we just go in here and look at this, uh, one second. Yeah, they did beat the Warriors. He didn't play in none of these other games. He played against the Pacers, the Pelicans, the Warriors, and then a couple of games versus the, um, I'm pretty sure that's the, the Suns. In a series versus the Suns, he was poor, but that's poor for his standards. He averaged 24, 8, and 7 against the Suns. <laughs> Now, that's a mark off, but in those games where he was coming back, he was hypothetically injured. Now, people might not give him a pass for that, but he even admitted that he wasn't 100%, and they said he would basically have to be done for the season to come back. So, their big plan was for Anthony Davis to get back in, but Anthony, Anthony Davis was injury prone as well. So, with Anthony Davis being injury prone, LeBron really couldn't do that by himself on a bum ankle. So him pulling up 24, 7, and 8 against the number one seed in the a, in a eventual Western Conference Finals champions, I feel like it's still kind of impressive for um, his standards. Either though it's not his usual 28, 8, and 10, or 28, 9, and 9. But I definitely don't feel like that shows a, or has a, a right of him falling off or even being – I've I've seen stories of him not being better than Luka Doncic's uh, – uh, who still hasn't got out the first round. Um, I've seen people saying he's not better than Nikola Jokic, who got swept by the Trailblazers. Not the Trailblazers, the Suns, and barely got out the first round. Um, but yeah, none of those players get marked off or knocked for what they did or what they put up. So I honestly feel like it's really just a narrative. LeBron is still a top three player. Um, honestly, and I don't know the order, but it's Giannis, KD, LeBron. I will say LeBron is definitely still a top three player in his league at the age of 36, which is highly freaking impressive. A lot of people do knock him and hate just because, you know, it's a lot of political stuff to do with that. Or you just like Jordan a lot, which is understandable. But you, it's no way you could put Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, any of these people over LeBron if they wasn't beating LeBron in the MVP race before he got injured. Even after the injury, you still really can't put these people in there because they all, they all, every single person has came up short this playoffs. Giannis came up short against the Nets. Chris Paul came up short against the Suns. KD airballed the game winning three. No matter if you like it or not, he airballed the game winning three. Trey Young came up short in games. Um, Luka Doncic came up short against the Clippers. Donovan Mitchell came up short against the, uh, the Clippers. Uh, Paul George came up short against the Suns. Joel Embiid came up short against the Hawks. Jokic came up short against the Suns. So, Damian Lillard came up short against the the trail uh, against the the nut the Nuggets. Excuse me, who got swept by the Suns. So, it's really like it's like nobody's really everybody's really harping in. On what LeBron went through, but every literally every NBA player has played a bad game in that in that postseason. Every every it's not it hasn't been not one person that has played. Kawhi came up short. Um, Anthony Davis got injured, but every superstar came up short more than probably more than once. KD's the only exception of only coming up short once. And that's just my opinion. I, you can't really knock and disregard LeBron just because he's LeBron when every NBA player had a horrible game or a bad series in that playoffs. Period, point blank. I, that's just my honest opinion. <laughs> so take the playoffs out the picture. LeBron was came back for the last, uh, I think it was like 10 to 4 games, some in, a, in, but some in between that range. Somebody correct me down. Um, there's no way if he was the best player in the world up until his injury that he's not a top five, top five, top five NBA player. There's no way he just automatically just run out of that. So if he's not top three, I'm sorry, but the list is is incorrect and false. Anybody that's saying he's not top three is completely wrong and invalid. 
making an argument that Giannis or KD is better than him is something argumental, but anything else is blasphemous and blasphemy. Um, that's just my honest opinion. I, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just being unbiased. I can see everything for what it is. I could pull up anybody's favorite player, a numerous of stats of them coming up short. James Harden played horrible. But, you know, everybody has a bad moment. Not even a bad moment. It's just normal for players not to play perfect all the time. It's just that he's LeBron. He's kind of political. He's doing Space Jam, too. It's kind of more of a higher note and more of a serious situation. So, yeah, that's my that's what I came up on it. The sad truth is LeBron's just disliked. He's just not liked. When he play bad, it's going to be hard. But everybody else has played bad. If LeBron airballed a game winning three in overtime, people will talk about that for the rest of his life. KD is already being swept under the rug. If LeBron had James Harden on him and then take him to the rack and did a post fade like Giannis did, people would be talking about that for the rest of his life. The rest of his life. If he was up 3-2 on the Clippers and lost, the rest of his life. If he got swept by the Suns, the rest of his life. So, the fact that he even lost in the first round is being talked about more than a whole bunch of great players coming up short this offseason or this postseason. So, just being from an unbiased point, that's where I'm coming from. That's why I feel like it is. But you guys let me know what you guys think, how you guys feel. Maybe I'm being unbiased. But there's no way you can sit up here and tell me he's not a top three NBA player with no factual proof besides inflated stats by Luka or Joel B that they put up just because they're the only player on their team in a losing effort. But I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just a crazy person. I don't know what you're talking about. You guys let me know how you feel in the comment section. Make sure you please like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. You guys comment down below. How would you guys rate or what players would you want me to do next? I'm out. Peace.